At a first glance, the University of Central Florida's football program is nothing special. Their Division I win-loss record is pretty average. Their performance in bowl games as a whole is mediocre, at best. They've finished a season ranked in the AP poll five times in 26 years. So overall, they seem like just any old mid-level Division I program. But then I took a closer look, and I quickly realized this is no ordinary football program. Originally, I just wanted to cover how they went from 0 and 12 to 13 and 0 in two years, which is absolutely insane. But then I learned about their history and how they let a former disgraced coach become their head coach and athletic director at the same time, at the age of 68. I also learned that they literally rose from nothing to become one of the greatest Cinderella stories in college football history, only to fall completely apart, like they had done time and time again. This is the most volatile team I've ever seen, and I'm gonna try to tell you the story as best I can. But before we dive in, this video wouldn't be possible without today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Look, if you're like me, then the last thing you want is your data to be in the hands of hackers. Many sites have leaked data such as passwords, credit card info, and driver's licenses belonging to billions of users. And that's why I use ExpressVPN to safeguard my personal data online. It helps give me the peace of mind that my data is safe. According to recent reports, hackers can make up to $1,000 for selling someone's personal information on the dark web, making people like you and me easy lucrative targets. ExpressVPN is an app that funnels your personal data through a secure encrypted tunnel so that no matter what device you use, you can have a peace of mind every time you use the internet. The app connects with just one click, is lightning fast, and the best part is ExpressVPN works on up to five devices simultaneously so you and your whole family can stay protected. And if you visit expressvpn.com slash KTO right now, you can arm yourself with an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Okay, to get into the mystery of UCF, let's first understand where they came from. The football program began in 1979 in Division III, where there are no scholarships. The first team was built off a tryout, and their head coach had signed up on a volunteer basis. Pretty humble beginnings. But over the course of 20 years, the program did something unheard of. They moved up from Division III to Division II, to Division I AA, then finally to Division I-A. This all happened in the span of less than 20 years. First off, a university moving up four NCAA divisions had never been done before. And secondly, they had done it so ridiculously fast, it's just insane. To this point, the program was defying all the odds, and it's a feel-good story. But then their journey into Division 1A began, and things weren't so easy. Despite a good season in 1998, the first nine years in D1A were up and down. In 2004, the team had decided to part ways with then-head coach Mike Kruzchek, and they decided to hire George O'Leary. This was considered a controversial and bold hire. The controversial part about George O'Leary was that previously he had taken the Notre Dame job in 2001, but resigned in disgrace five days later due to the school finding inconsistencies in his resume. But he had had success at Georgia Tech and had just recently coached in the NFL, so UCF saw their chance at a huge upgrade at head coach. His first season was a total disaster. It was the worst season the program had experienced at this level. The following year, when they finally managed to win a game, they broke a 17-game losing streak, which was the longest in the nation at the time. But despite these hardships, by the end of his fourth year coaching, it was clear that UCF had found their guy. George O'Leary had led the team to a conference championship in 2007, in a season where the team set a then-record seven-game win streak. In four years, George O'Leary had taken the program to the next level, but when you start to look more closely at those four years, you start to notice a weird trend taking shape. Year one, just horrible. They didn't win a single game. Year two, wow, big turnaround. He was actually named Conference Coach of the Year for that season. Year three, big step back. They weren't good at all. Then year four, wow, another huge turnaround. What was going on in Central Florida? Down and up, then down and up. 
You want to guess what happened in 2008 after that great 2007 season? Yep, you guessed it. They were terrible. Then two years later, they had their best season ever again. Now, 11 wins, another conference championship, their first time ranked, and they finally won a bowl game. UCF wins their first ever bowl game, and they take down the Georgia Bulldogs 10 to six. What happens next? They fall completely apart again. The weirdest part about this whole thing was every time they go down, they come back up and do even better. 2012 was a huge bounce back, as expected. Then that's when 2013 happened. 2013 was a major hype year for Central Florida. This was the most talented UCF team ever up to this point. Blake Bortles, Storm Johnson, Brashad Perryman, and company had just dominated. Looking for Wharton in the end zone. Wharton behind the defense. In a brand new conference, they finished undefeated in conference play and had achieved a chance to play in the illustrious Fiesta Bowl. This is one of the most decorated bowl games ever and it was one of the major BCS bowls at the time. This was a huge deal, not just for the program, but for the entire university. Best part, they won in an upset over Baylor. The following year was a small setback, but nothing too crazy. They had lost guys like Blake Bortles and Storm Johnson. Bortles had become the highest drafted UCF player ever, so the slight fall off made sense. But then the 2015 season approached. Speaking of the university, the largest school in the state has officially announced head football coach George O'Leary will take over as interim director of athletics. George O'Leary was named the interim athletic director. He was still the head coach of the football team. I get it. He had done a ton for the university and he obviously had respect from the school's president. But this dude was 68 years old at the time. That's over the average age of retirement. And even though it was just the interim job, trying to manage all the university's sports while coaching the football team, in hindsight, was not a smart move at all. Third and short, Harris with time. Dangerous territory and it's intercepted. Trey Robinson. And the celebration begins on the Furman sideline. Only two seasons removed from that Fiesta Bowl win, and the team had started 0-8. At this point, George O'Leary decided to resign, and the team went on to finish 0-12. There is one perspective I found on the internet, and it's a story time video from the YouTuber Destroying. He details his perspective of the 2015 season as a member of the team. And the gist of the video is that George O'Leary was an asshole. Like, the biggest douche. George O'Leary sounds like a no-nonsense guy. What you may call an old-school head coach. To an old person, this kind of guy is meant to discipline you and toughen you up. But there's definitely a line between rallying a team under strict code and what George O'Leary was like. Don't believe me? Listen to this next story. During spring workouts in 2008, apparently, O'Leary was verbally abusing running back Eric Plancher, who was apparently struggling badly during workouts. According to four unnamed players, O'Leary continued to push Plancher despite obvious signs that he should stop. And right after practice, Plancher collapsed. One hour later, he had died. He died, y'all. Apparently, the coaching staff knew that Plancher had sickle cell trait, which they knew could have led to health problems, and they chose to ignore this. Any water breaks between the three conditioning drills and what's now about to happen with regard to Coach O'Leary? No. Davis says that Coach O'Leary ordered water out of Nicholson Field where they were practicing. In a trial later on, UCF's athletic association was found guilty of negligence. His parents were awarded $5 million each. So, long story short, players didn't like O'Leary. In fact, according to Destroying, players cheered in the locker room once they found out that he had resigned. But even if O'Leary wasn't liked by players, it still doesn't make sense how this team was so incredibly volatile all these years. I don't even know what to think. It's like the moment the team got good, it went straight to their heads. But then the moment that they got bad, they got pissed and rallied together and became stronger. I don't know. Anyways, 
2015 was officially a new low, and the man who had brought them all this way was now gone. Despite this, their next hire proved to be a critical one. Uh, it's my honor to introduce your new head football coach, Scott Frost. Scott Frost was an excellent choice. He was a receivers coach from Oregon who had been nationally recognized for his work there. He brought in some youthful energy that was desperately needed within this organization. And immediately, they improved to a six-win team, kind of falling in line with the old O'Leary up and down technique. Gearing up for 2017, the team was projected to be right around the same level, finishing right around the middle of their conference. But UCF had other plans. I don't care how optimistic you are. What happens next is truly one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Killens on the carry, breaking free. Look out, Adrian Killens up to the races. Nobody is going to stop this guy. Touchdown, UCF. Milton has a man wide open downfield. Stanford. Not only did they have their best season ever, they later became recognized by the NCAA as national champions. And the dominance didn't stop there. Even though Scott Frost left for Nebraska, UCF started the 2018 season 12-0, reaching an unprecedented 25 wins in a row. They did go on to lose to Joe Burrow and LSU in the Fiesta Bowl, but how wild is that? This five to six year stretch from 2013 to 2018 is just insane. I don't know if we'll ever see another five to six year turnaround like this. Okay, to wrap up this video, I'm gonna focus on a game during that undefeated 2017 season, the rivalry matchup between USF and UCF. This was one of the most wild college games that season. It was such a hype matchup because both teams were having a stellar year and the game itself was back and forth high scoring, and came down to the wire. With less than two minutes remaining, USF scored a critical touchdown, and then they got the two-point conversion to tie things up. With things all knotted up at 42, this is what happened next. Mike Hughes. With a high speed. And Mike Hughes, the kicker to beat! 